the reign of terror, show trials were a very important part of Stalin's regime. His political opponents were put on these show trials, where they pleaded guilty to impossible charges of treason. Judicial authorities in these trials had already determined the guilt of the defendant before the trials even began. The only goal was to impress the public with the accusation and verdict, and also spread fear into those who resisted Stalin's regime. The show trials were part of the propaganda and used as morality plays. 28 was the first Soviet show trial in which a group of engineers was arrested due to accusations of conspiring with former owners of coal mines to sabotage the Soviet economy. This show trial became a distinctive event of the purge and was the beginning of a series of accusations against enemies of the people, or class enemies. Enemies of the people supposedly acted against society as a whole. Though it was a term used historically, Lenin adopted it and used it frequently. And then Stalin began to use it as a way to convict innocent people. Stalin's reign of terror was based on a purge mentality. This mentality arose from self-criticism, which was first supported by Lenin and old Bolsheviks and then carried on by Stalin. It was characterized by public shaming of those going against the popular government and society, as well as encouraging people to turn in and get rid of others who were weak or possibly guilty. The purge mentality was first employed in industry and agriculture to identify slackers. The process included investigation by a commission, and those found guilty were reprimanded, lost their jobs, left homeless, or turned over to the secret police. Yezhovshina was the most severe stage of the Great Purges. It started with the show trials of those implicated in Sergei Kirov's assassination, who was really murdered by Stalin, in 1934. The accused enemies of the people were made to confess to crimes by torture. The victims were Zinoviev and Kamenev, Tomsky, Tekhachevsky, Bukharin, Rykov, NKVD Chief Yagoda, Krupskaya, NKVD Chief Yezhov, and Trotsky, who were all murdered between 1936 and 1940. Gulags were Soviet forced labor camp systems used during the Stalin era. They contained some political prisoners, but mostly people who committed petty crimes. About half the political prisoners were sent to the camps without a trial. In the gulags, people worked up to 14 hours a day doing physically exhausting activities. When they weren't working hard enough, they would be shot down by machine guns in the forest. Gulags were responsible for the deaths of about 15 million people. Stalin began to manipulate legalization in order to further ensure his power over the people of Russia. He introduced Article 58 of the 1926 Russian Criminal Code, which loosely defined counter-revolutionary and other terrorist crimes. The Kirov Law of 1934 stated that executions were to be carried out without appeal, pardon, or review. He established the NKVD in 1934, also called the People's Commissariat for Internal Affairs. The NKVD oversaw secret police, gulags, and special session courts. They were the most powerful and feared Soviet institution throughout the Stalinist period. The NKVD issued regulation to be used against the tried and convicted. They disbanded after the Russian Revolution ended, and functions were transferred to the GPU, or the State Political Doctrine. The KGB, or the post-Stalin secret police force, was later formed to continue oppressing political and religious dissent. They no longer inflicted such large-scale purges, terror, and forced depopulation on the people. Article 131 of the 1936 USSR Constitution validated extrajudicial punishment for enemies of the people. Finally, Stalin implemented extreme measures to liquidate the Trotskys and other double dealers in 1937, including the use of torture to get confessions, the use of kangaroo courts, and unrestricted power to kill. By 19 Throughout Stalin's reign of terror, he uh, utilized propaganda to enforce his power over the Russian people. Stalin censored all propaganda in order to keep himself from looking bad. There was propaganda all over Russia, including pictures, statues, as well as continuous praise and applause. Mothers even taught their children that Stalin was the wisest man of the age, and history books and photographs were changed to make him the hero of the revolution and obliterate the names of purged people like Trotsky. One of the last attempts to oppose Stalin and his reign of terror was the Ryutin Affair in 1932, when Martyrman Ryutin was publicly critical of Stalin and his propaganda and his ruining of the arts and public opinion, which led to his arrest for oppositionist views. He was then allowed to re-enter um, the political scene, but continued for the rest of his career to silently oppose Stalin's regime.